Welcome back to Bristol 2009. In the last episode, we explored what AV forums are showing at our stand this year. That is, the difference between Blu-ray disc and upscaled DVD. But where is Blu-ray technology going this year and what kind of products can we expect to see? Phil Hinton reports on the current Blu-ray situation. As Blu-ray disc hits its third birthday, we are finally starting to see some of the higher-end brands entering the marketplace with their players. Bristol was no exception this year for exotic Blu-ray player announcements from Denon and Arkham debuting their new machines. Starting with Denon, just how much technology do you get for £4,000? Roger Batchelor was keen to explain. This is the DVD-01 UD and uh, we'll be launching the player in April of this year. So we'll be shipping by the end of that month, and it's the the world's first universal high-end Blu-ray player. So it will cover all the formats: SACD, DVD audio, HDCD, you name it, basically. And um, obviously, the aim is to produce all the formats at the very highest quality, audio and video, as is always the aim. You know, nothing added, nothing taken away uh, from the original master. And to that end, we've got all the outputs that you need to do that, as well as HDMI. We're going to enhance the HDMI audio by using Denon Link in a new version called Denon Link 4th Generation. Um, now, Denon Link at the moment, as many enthusiasts will know, will carry the audio um, for SACD, DVD audio and so on, Dolby Digital. Um, what we can do now with HD audio from Blu-ray is we can sync up the clock signal between the player and the amplifier and improve the jitter that you get with HDMI, same way that we did with the original Denon Link system. So a cleaner sound. Now these units are pre-production, so we're not in full production yet. So we haven't got the Denon Link 4 working here at the show, but of course we will have in due course. In addition to that, for the audio files we have balanced stereo outputs and we're using Cord Company cable here, Anthem cable, to get a superb sound into the preamp which has got balanced inputs for stereo and uh, we can switch between the various inputs and compare the different sources you know, uh, to see what we, what we think to the sound. It's a very warm rich sound using the balanced uh, outputs and of course the, the AVPA1 POA 1HD, these are balanced, fully balanced products already, so we're using balanced feeds from the preamp to the power amp as well. So the whole chain, both internally and externally, is a balanced system for, for pure stereo playback. On top of that, that's the audio side, so it's of great interest to the audio files coming to the show here, which of course has traditionally been an audio show for many, many years. Um, then we've got the, the video side of the player. So for that again, once again working with Silicon Optics, HQV Realta processor, the Hollywood quality video processor, uh, as they call it, the Realta processor, giving us the best quality picture. Now with Blu-ray, um, you still can find some video noise in the signal, particularly when you're blowing up to a large screen. You know, we've used a 58-inch plasma here at the show, but of course when you use a projector and a big screen, you can still see video noise, if, even if you don't need the detail enhancement so much, which you can still use for standard DVD, the noise reduction can be very, very useful. But that's another point, of course, is being able to use the player for the, the original DVD collection and get that to the very best quality as well. So whatever format you have, we're aiming to um, to get the very best out of it. And of course, it's a sign of things to come from Denon. So with Denon taking the highest ground possible, what's our hi-fi company, Arcam, going to bring to the mix? Showing a static model of a Blu-ray Blu player. Um, it does have hardware inside it. It's not a mock-up. And there is quite a heavy program going on at the factory. And we're developing this whole product in the UK. So that's a full profile two. Um, and in its premium version, it will have uh, extra post-processing with an Anchor Bay ABT2 2010, so that standard definition should be as good within constraints as the Blu-ray. Um, and we're also putting eight channels of audio on it with top-of-the-line DAX and the right clock reclocking and so forth, so we can support all those legacy uh, processors and receivers out there. No, there's a lot of uh, argument and debate on the forums as to whether it's worth spending more money on a Blu-ray player than, say, a PlayStation 3 or a cheap standalone. So why should they go for a premium product like Arcam? Um, partly video, at least for standard definition and the like, and absolutely definitely audio. Um, after all, we're really an audio company at heart, and we always spend a lot of time trying to get that audio right. The audio electronics are essentially similar 
um, to those in the DV139, for members that know what that is. Um, and so we can't tell precisely how well it will, will or won't turn out yet, but we should be of comparable audio quality right up from CD through to Blu-ray. So John, there's a lot of work goes into developing one of these players and it has taken you a few years now to get to this stage, so what kind of development has gone on there? Well, we've talked to a number of the chip vendors across the world to find somebody that was A, willing to deal with us and B, had the kind of quality of part we wanted. And though I'm not releasing the name of that company yet, I'm pleased to say it's a British and European development in its entirety. Um, so uh, people can read into that what they will. And we have found a tier one silicon company, one of the world's top ten, actually to work with little old us to help develop this project. <laughs> So it sounds like a, an excellent product. Uh, unfortunately, the software is not quite ready just yet. That's why we're not seeing it. But when will it be available and how much are we talking about? Um, the plan is to make the full all singing or dancing player available towards the end of this year. Um, and we project a retail price of £2,000. And what we hope to do is to introduce a transport only version that's a strip down. Um, for use with things like the AVR 600 and that would be two or three months earlier if things go to plan and be a bit less money but we don't know how much yet. So that way we can offer customers that already have all the post-processing in their AVR or amplifier, um, they don't need to spend it on duplicating that in the player. We think that's a fair approach. With the high-end quality machines covered, there are also some mid-range players making their debut at Bristol. Onkyo and Yamaha were keen to show off their first attempts at Blu-ray with new models at this year's show. There will be an interlude in Yamaha Blu-ray players. We've got our BDS2900, which will be uh, an existing model throughout the summer. Uh, we're getting tentative details through, which I'm sorry I can't reveal today, about items for Christmas season, a, a wider spread of product at, at different price points. Um, it's, it's, been a, it's been a strong selling unit for us. Um, it fulfills its main uh, role of, of, of helping people who insist on matching player and amp combos to, uh, to help sell our amplifiers and it's been well reviewed in its own right so we're happy with how we've gone how we've done it so now lots of talk about profile 2 BD yeah. live and so on whether it's worth it or not is another debate for another day <laughs> I suppose but um, are you players capable of that at the moment we're what we stay it staying on 1.1 um, everything that's in the pipeline moves up to profile 2 um, it's as much uh, being able to uh, maintain software and send software automatically if the, if the, um, if the market demands it, which it makes Profile 2 more appealing. Um, I remain personally to be convinced about the nature of um, the, the BD Live facilities. For every disc which is remotely interesting, there are several that aren't. And to wrap up our look at Blu-ray at the Bristol Sound and Vision Show, we spoke to Mark Chaffins at the Onkyo stand. Yeah, well, basically it's called the BDs. DVBD606, it's about £350, and it plays Blu-rays. It's um, quite a good machine for DVDs. It's got some reason, reasonable upscaling inside, and it thought, we thought it was about time to bring a machine out, and it's in keeping style-wise with the rest of the system, SD card slot, outputs, the lossless audio streams, and it will display 1080p24. And is it a Profile 2? No. Well, the, there's, there's a lot of things about Profile 2 that don't seem to ring true anyway, isn't it? It's, it seems to be a bit of a gimmick, so people won't really lose out, will they? No, I mean, the, the core things with Profile 2 is obviously BD Live and the interactiveness off the internet. And we thought that's not something that's totally critical at the moment when most people are buying the format for watching a movie with good sound and good picture. A lot of people, if you ask them, don't bother, don't bother watching the extras. So the BD Live side of it wasn't important to us initially. We will offer that on the next models. But it's a good, good machine. We've been running it here at the show, non-stop, three of them. They've all behaved excellently. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's a good little machine. And that wraps up our look at Blu-ray at this year's Bristol Sound & Vision Show. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon.